want you to be able to, of course, find the numerical values that I'm looking for. But I'm also more interested right now in how do you do it. How do you do it? Do you think you're going to have that? Oh, okay. Um, how is that from the last one oh. there? I mean, that, is there a y equals function that goes with that one? Or the book? This is y equals x squared plus one. That was the same one. This is y equals x. Oh. How about this one? How do you find well, what is this? What does this area, this blackness, indicate? Area under the curve. So how do we find that area under that curve? Find the antiderivative. Find the antiderivative of the integral. The definite integral. Okay. When we say definite integral, we mean area under the curve, basically. Uh, your indefinite integral will be your antiderivative. Definite integral will be your area under the curve. But you use your antiderivative for that. Uh, not just the antiderivative. So we, we find the definite integral from zero, zero, zero three, from left to right. Uh, what? Uh, X squared. Yeah. Okay. So so we take the integrative of x squared plus one, and we get yep. uh, one three one third x cubed plus x. Yeah. You do that from zero to three. Plug in zero in there, that part's going to be zero, so we don't have to worry about that. So just do the three part, that would be the, the first part, and you subtract the zero part, so you can just put it in there. So we get yep. 12? Yep, just 12. Okay, 12. Take your number. No, 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 no. Yep. Okay, so the area underneath that curve from zero to three is 12. Okay, how do we find the area under this curve? Mm -hmm. Same thing for a different function. Yes. Zero three of x dx. We have one half x squared from zero three. We can always find the area underneath the curve, meaning between a curve and the x-axis. So we can find that red area and then subtract that yellow area. <coughs> we'll find just the black area. Good morning, corn socket. So we can find that red area, which would be the same as this, and find that yellow area that's underneath the line. Subtract the yellow from the red, and we're left with the black. Yeah. Right? That's the basic idea. So that <coughs> we we want to see that so that if I'm if I'm asking you just for this and I didn't ask you for these two things to start with, you realize all I'm doing is taking the area of the of, of one curve and subtracting the area of another curve. Okay. So I'm going to give you a couple of curves and try that. How does that? That's fairly scary. Thank you. 
It's a great zoo. It's the world famous San Diego Zoo. Zoos are sad if you think about it. But then they're not. the area between those two curves. Do we have, Do we have a, a Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Between uh, one and two. Do you know those families that listen to the two songs when you're walking along the call? Wait a minute. From one okay. and zero. a lot of this. This is all good stuff. So uh, the definite integral from 0 to 2 of x cubed plus 2 dx. Okay, so we'll work on that. 1 fourth x to the 4 plus 2x. 1 fourth x to the 4th plus 2x. Plug in the 2. Then we'll plug in the 0, but that one really that. So we'll just plug in the 2 and realize that we get the end of that 2. So 1 fourth times 4 plus 2 times 2. So that's a 1 plus 4. Right? I'm um, sorry, plus to the 4. 2 to the 4 is 16, 16 divided by 4. 4. 4 okay. plus 4 is 8. Okay. So the area under that curve from 0 to 2 is 8. And 0 to uh, negative 1 half x plus 1 x. That's going to be negative 1 fourth x squared plus x from 0 to 2. Right? Yep. Plug in 2, negative 1 fourth times 2 squared. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. Yeah? 
Lisa? Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, Now, here's zero, here's three. If we want to find the area between these two curves. Thank you very much. Have a good one. Yeah. Thanks for coming by. Yeah, for sure. Should I copy the golden at all? Uh, <laughs> yeah, visit with her about it. Just for all the money. Yeah. 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 subtract this area, which is the area underneath the line, what am I going to get when I take this area and subtract this area? Mm -hmm. Negative area. Is the area between those two a negative area? Yeah. No. We want to get a positive area. Now, if I take the x squared function and I subtract, if I, if I take the area under that parabola, and then I take the area underneath the line and I subtract that, what will that give me? If you do positive area, we'll give you the area between the two curves, what you're looking for, right? So over here, if I do the x squared minus the area under the parabola minus the, the area under the line, I get this negative area. Yeah. If I do it over here, it works out. So what do I need to do to get you gotta like, break this thing? You gotta separate the bits. There, there's there's one area that I want to find over here, and it would make sense to take the area under the line, since the line is higher, and subtract the area under the parabola. And then over here. It would make sense to take the area under the parabola and subtract the area under the line. So we need to it to the two so we'll set x squared equal to x plus 1, and then figure out what, which x value, solve for x, right? Figure out which x value causes the y value to be the same. So we get uh, x squared minus 2 x minus 1 equals 0. Um, Oh, 
times t equals uh, negative b, that's 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared, that's 1, minus 4 times a minus c, 2 times a, 1 plus or minus the square root of uh, 1 plus 4, that's 5, so 5, 2, okay. So what, what x value is this? Positive, so there's two of them represented here, right? Which one is this? Positive. Plus. One plus the square root of five over two. Uh, let's, let's approximate it to like four decimal places. How about four decimal places? Okay. So that's the This area? go to the intersection point, we, we take the, the upper function, the greater function, take its area, and subtract this area. And then once they intersect, then we switch over to now the function that's above the other. If they intersected several times, we'd have to find a bunch of intersections and find all those areas separately. So we're going to sum up what we just learned on this screen. Okay. Okay. All right. So it, it's important that the, the function that you're subtracting is which one? One by one. One by one. It's the bottom one. It's the bottom one from the top one. I think it would be good. So, if you want to take the, the one that you're subtracting, you want that to be your lower function, your lesser function, and you want this guy that you're subtracting it from to be the greater function. Okay. Whenever that switches, whenever that relationship changes, then, when the, what was lower is now uh, higher, then you need to switch the order of subtraction. Okay. Um, Yes. 
there are the two graphs. Um, seem to be any issues here? No? No? I feel like it's an issue that one of the functions is below the x-axis? Oh, just for f of x, so you found this area from here to there, and yeah. this was as much as this? Yeah. Okay. That figure like four. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. In the end, we'll find that, that Aaron's right, that it you kind know, of all works itself out. As long as what you're making sure of is that one curve is above the other curve, it doesn't actually matter if the other curve goes below the x axis. Still, just a straightforward, subtract the area of one from the area of the other, it all works out. Okay. Um, so let's think about it. Let's, let's break it up right there and see. Why it doesn't really matter if there's a negative area there? Okay. This one is, this seems pretty natural. We take this area, right, that bigger area right there, we subtract this area, and we're left with the square right here, right? Mm -hmm. That's good. We come over here and define this area underneath these two curves. If we take this area, what kind of area is this? So we're going to take, say, area number one. This area number two, like the total area between them is, is this area plus this much area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so this area is positive. This area one is positive. When we subtract area two, area two is actually negative value. And you subtract that negative from the positive and it actually winds up adding this area on to the okay. So the only thing we need to make sure of is that one curve is above the other curve. As long as one curve is above the other curve, we can just subtract the area of one from the other. Even if this other one crosses the x-axis over and over and over, like a sine wave or something. As long as the one function is above the other, that all takes care of itself. So, how are you going to find the area between these two curves? That's the indefinite interval from. Zero three. Which was that? F of x, uh, f of x minus g of x. No, f of x and minus of x. You're still saying that the definite interval for f of x minus the oh, no, backwards. Okay. So g of x is, the, is this curve here. Yeah. Okay. So you can even write it that way. Take g of x, that's the, the upside down parabola. That's one that's on top. And then the other one is f of x, that's the one that's below. Uh, <coughs> so to actually write that out, it looks like this g of x is negative x squared plus 2x plus 3 minus uh, f of x, which is x squared minus 4x plus 3. So here's one advantage of, of writing it as one big integral. And we can distribute the negative and combine like terms so that the only thing to take um, 
this similar kind of integral, a to the root of one times. Negative x squared, well, let's see, negative x squared minus x squared is negative 2x squared. 2x. 2x minus 2x squared. Negative 2x squared. Negative 2x minus negative 4x, so it's plus 4x. 4x plus 2x. So this is x. Uh, 3 minus 3 is 0, so that actually cancels out. Makes finding the answer derivative a whole lot easier. You can find this, in, this definite integral, subtract this definite integral, but it's kind of a pain. So, um, let's see, the answer derivative of negative 2x squared, 2 thirds x cubed, plus 3x squared, 0, 3, 3 and 0, not Seven plus three times nine times negative eighteen plus twenty-seven. We get that. Anybody else get nine? Find the area between two terms that we make sure that uh, the, the one out in front, the one to be subtracted from, is a higher curve, and when you're subtracting, the one to be subtracting is a lower curve. When you split that up, then you need to split that up. If one of them goes below the x axis, that's okay, that doesn't uh, turn out to make a difference. You don't have to break that up. The upper curve is below the x-axis and the lower curve is below the x-axis as long as still one is above the other. Yeah. So. Good. So always take the upper curve's area minus the lower curve's area. And to make things easier on yourselves, when you write these definite integrals, just go ahead and combine the function with the one uber function and you need to be able to of that. So, we really kind of want to see what that means. Just real quickly before we move on. All right, so if we take the area between these two curves, it will be the same as finding the area under this function. So let's look at what that function is. This is negative 2x squared plus 6x. This area between the two curves is the same as the area underneath this other curve. Okay. Okay. This next subject, we needed to, to be able to, to understand all that and navigate our way around that subject without difficulty. Um, I think it's really intuitive. 
take the larger area or the area of the, the higher curve minus the area of the curve primary. And you need to be able to do that in order to do this other thing. Okay? Uh, so what we're going to do now is create solids based on graphs. Right? Kind of a hard thing to See on that table back there, um, there's a bunch of functions. We can see that if I were to cut it right here, which I actually did a minute ago, it would be like square like. Right? So um this is this? Um, yeah. Okay, yeah. how long did you figure out a way to find like, the surface area of that square? Yeah. yeah. And how was that? Square of the square. So you take the function, what was the function? Okay, so the area of a square is its side square. Yeah. Right? The area for this square, well this side right here is just the y value of the function. Right? The y value of the function is right there. From there to there. Y. So the y value of the function is defined by, it's written back here, x squared plus 1. going to be a, a very useful skill. Okay. So that's what I really want you to first get your heads wrapped around. How do I find the area given some cross okay. uh, So that's the, that's the side, so we'll square it, and that's going to be the area of that square, of any square, or any x value, right? Does that make sense? So this x value right here, whatever it is, if I plug that in there, First, it'll give you the y value. I'll square the y value. This is the y value right here. And if I square it, I get the area of the square. Okay. Um, Finished up finding the equation. Oh, that's very right. similar to close to e. So let me real quick. So this is supposed to be a semicircle, pretty semicircular. Uh, could have been a little bit like taller. But you only have so much play, so it's fine. Alright, so semicircle, like half a circle. Um, let's start with what's the area of a semicircle? Uh, R squared, that's the area of the circle, just divided by 2, the half circle. Did you figure out? So the R is, is that guy right there. How big is R? It's the y value of the function. No, this one. Oh, yeah, this one. Yeah, because this is the x axis running through here. Okay. So this guy right here, the y value, is going to give us the R of the semicircle. How do we define the y in terms of x? Yeah, y. This guy over here, whatever it was, or was it? One half x. Okay. So r is one half x. This guy right here is just wherever I am at any semicircle, the radius of that semicircle happens to be the y of this function. So area of any semicircle is equal to pi times one half x squared. I'll give you the area at any x value, give you the area of the semicircle that is the cross section. Okay? Okay? Um, this one has a triangular cross section, a collateral triangle. Highlight. That's beautiful. Pretty, pretty perfect. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, and then the, the back of it, something like that. I don't know. That's really good. So, how are you going to find the area of, say, this? It's supposed to be an equilateral triangle. Okay. Okay, so the area of a triangle is one half base times height. Let's start there. 
can always start with what shape, what, I mean, we know how to find this, the area of the simple shape, right? we have based on height. So let's start with the base line. The base, and the base, right there is the base. How do we find the base? Y. That's just the y value. Y is x plus 1. Yeah. How about the height? Can you figure out the height? No. Well, you just, the area of the triangle is one half base times height, right? Yeah. And so we need to somehow be able to define the height in terms of x. It's an equilateral triangle. So there, there's also more height. Given it's equilateral and the base is. this in half like this and draw the height then this would be half of this but we do we do get a triangle here where like uh, this let's see uh, well let's just cut to the chase here that's going to be 60 uh, This is going to be given this this base, the height of an, e an equilateral triangle is equal to the square root of three times the base. So we've got it. So the base is the base. The h is the square root of three times the base. So this part is going to be square root of three times the base. B square root of three times. the surface area of any cross section. Okay. So, I just gave it to you. For all the equilateral triangles, yeah. If we want to figure it out, this angle, how big is this angle in an equilateral triangle? 45? No, it should be 45. 60, 60, 60. Right? 180 split up into three equal angles, 60 degrees, okay? So this is a triangle right here, a right triangle, all right? If this is B, this is B over two, right? Yeah. I think I got this wrong. Let's see. Um, so if you want to find the, like this side, that's the sine of 60, or the tangent of 60. Tangent of 60 uh, is equal to opposite over uh, adjacent. Okay, so the opposite side is the height over the adjacent, which is b over 2. Okay, so we're going to figure out what h is. Right. Tangent of 60 degrees times, oh, times b over 2. Yeah. So multiply by b over 2. Over two. And the tangent of 60 degrees is 